off then. Right, we're going to kick off. If I can ask you all to uh, mute yourselves, then they'll have less interference. It's better for me and for you. Right, evening all. Um, as I'm going through my slides, if anybody, um, if anybody wants to ask a question, as I'm going through my slides, just put your hand up and I'll see that straight away. Then you can come in. I can click on the hand. Because if I get about three hands at once, three people coming in, it gets a bit of confusion for you a lot. So as I go through my slides, if, if you've got a question as we're going through, just put your hand up and I'll bring you in. If somebody's doing a talk like Keith did last week on his coleus, if you can let them do the talk, because it's only a, about 12 slides, wait till the end of his talk and then I'll say any questions for Keith on that whatever subject. Then he sees you that way. And then just bung your hand up again. See if that works better. I make it. Evening. Jeffrey, birthday, innit? Yeah. Happy birthday from the troops. Big we'll one, all yeah. get away. Happy birthday, Jeffrey. Thank you. Right, mute yourself. Happy birthday, again, Jeff. You people. Thanks. Right, let's kick off. One step closer. Right, have you all got the round of beef up? Yeah. Good. <laughs> Let's get back on that one. Right, this is our... Well, this is one of our... Um, um, boozers, top of Colligate. All I'm doing... Let's see if I can zoom in on that. A big nose is not an excuse for not wearing a mask. I still wear underpants. I thought that was good, that. <laughs> right, let's kick off. Uh, we had a good um, week's session, uh, Zoom talk uh, last week. Keith giving us uh, insight into taking coleus cuttings. Very good, Keith. Thank you, sir. Also from last week, I had a couple of firsts and seconds, if you remember, from the online show on the British Gladiola Society. These were my exhibits. There was Lady Helen, which is that one there, and uh, Shalimar. And I put a collection of three in as well. Then was Purple Summer. I forgot what the name was. I think there was um, people put two different names in, but uh, that was from that. And a message from Jennifer. Oh, I may go to get a complimentary box of breathing sachets out of day. If you remember, I asked her for some samples so I could send out for if anybody wanted them on the wheel. Uh, she was saying she went to a greenhouse in Orkney once and it's festooned with the green fly. I got the lady to mix reaming through a watering can and drench everything. She emailed me to say days later, we did the trick, most of the green fly had vanished. Which is why I'm still trialing with the, the dust, with everything. Uh, right, somebody sent me this earlier on. Uh, Steve asked me, anybody knows what is up with these yuppers? They've been in a while, they flowered last year, and this year they've gone like this. Anybody got any ideas on them? You've never had it a flower. Anybody got any ideas? Paul, you got your hand up. Fungi, Mick. Fungi, I think. Fungal disease, I think. Mm. I've never seen it at Fowler. I used to have a big yucca on the front. Okay, I had a couple of it, it was like that, and it is a fungal disease. Uh, Google. Okay, I think you're it. Think, think so. Well, just staying on the photo, uh, Lizzie asked us earlier on if I've ever grown weeds to replenish the, the, the goodies in the soil. Uh, no. My reply was, I don't even use weeds in my composting, so I ain't going to grow them um, just to replenish my soil. 
there's loads of stuff you can put on your soil to replenish it I, I wouldn't waste the, the time anyway I'd grow somewhere else and use it right if you remember last week I we went through the um, getting veg ready or other stuff for the show so this is the day before the show the, the garage is chocker it's all been clean it's nice cold and dark in the garage meaning it's going to be good for looking after the stuff it ain't going to get warm and also the van is uh, loaded up ready to go down first thing in the morning it usually takes me five or six trips down to the show with me goodies show day is always the second Saturday in September except for last year we're hoping to start up again the the meetings in August this year because we were the places staying open that was our biggest drawback but uh, this is Saturday morning about half past eight we get this is down the trading sheds that's where we keep our board for the top but luckily we, we get uh, quite a few helpers and we uh, got a mate with a, a van to pick up there and we get all the stuff out the sheds into there there are the vases for the flower people obviously and uh, this is Wilson Hall it's one of those places it, it, it's got still it's a large room they used to have them years ago we've got a big stage and we can seat everybody around it's a Boston size room well it's the biggest size room around here if I had a close would have been in the quagmire or you getting somewhere else for all the trestles we had to make ourselves and luckily them are stored around the back in one of their little rooms but these are the boards which were out of our uh, trading sheds. Um, all classes are open for the show. Staging starts at half ten on the morning. And luckily the last couple of years we've had no rain, i.e. staging outside. And it's been windless otherwise. The flower people have start cussing. But they're not going inside. Right, once we've got all these tabletops on, if some of these are higher or lower, we then have to level them, use a good beer mats underneath or under the legs here. But once all these are, then the separation cards can go out from the classes and all that rubbish. But because uh, we have a good collection of people helping us out, that, that usually takes 20 minutes and it's done. And we can start the show off. Mike and Jean and myself, do most of the work on the committee with help from others as well as we'll see you later on but uh, them two are luckily on the same committee as uh, Abbey Road allotments meaning they're good workers meaning that's going to work as well so these are signing everybody in uh, it's free entry it's an open show anybody can uh, enter we have 203 classes there are no reserves meaning you can't put reserve anything to take anything out because we want everything for the auction on the night that's how we get our money back uh, we have a novice section in the veg percent gladioli dahlia plus classes for flower ranging domestic kids a novice is a person who has not won a first prize at any recognized show so we got four lines of tables out as you can see there and we fill the place plus the stage as well luckily we got um, seating all the way around the place because this is where we need our punters for tonight don't forget when this opens for tonight we need them sat down ready for the auction at eight o'clock they're going to stand up or whatever <coughs> and get bored and clear off if you want to keep them there judges <coughs> This is a uh, Barry Envious Judge from uh, Chesterfield. He's uh, come down the last couple of years. And that's Dave, a good mate of mine. Uh, lives close to Barry as well. And they come down together. And that, they split the veg with them. We, we need two veg judges. And it takes them about two and a half, three hours. That's how much veg there is. We'd, we'd never get away with one, with one judge. We are <coughs> affiliated to the National Veg Society 
There is Croissant Gladioli. Meaning we can use their medals. Come on to that later on. Uh, judging flowers, we have a, a judge for them as well. He's done the last couple of years. He's a good lad. Judging starts at 2.30. So staging in the morning. I've got four hours to get the stuff out. Judging starts at 2.30. And that can last all afternoon. But, uh, we have some good exhibitor with uh, flowers and veg. We also have a, a, a chap doing the cakes, jams, pickles, whatever. This is Ray Poole. He was a National Dahlia Society judge and he was a, a, well, a really good uh, Dahlia grower in his time. So he used to judge before we had our new one. And that was his missus. They used to do all the, the cakes and gum. But when they did the wine, they bloody drunk it all. They got Kaylide. And the grandson had to come and take her home. So it uh, does the cakes now, he said. Because we're affiliated to all the um, shows, we get their medals. Which is what we do. Judges are still going. So this is getting close to the end now because I've been down that side. Because there's veg all down that side and then up this side to there, as you can see. And this is a mixture with all the, all the flowers. So uh, they're doing well. Obviously, the place is cleared while Judy's is on. And we bring uh, tea, coffee, sarnies, and all that thing. Usually, the doors open at 6 30. Let's see if we can get all the price cards out. And finished. So marking up, we have a heavy section for every stonian, as you can see there. Then the next one is a uh, blanch leaks, three blanch leaks, and then intermediate leaks. Different years. Some years we get a good year, a good turnout. Then other years, because we got the allium leaf miner up round by us as well, which is a pain in the arrows on the alliums. And uh, you've got to use baddies to put a decent leak in. As you can see, most of these have got thrift on. Because uh, obviously we, we don't like using baddies. Sometimes you, you've got no choice, you've got to use it. Pot leaks, uh, we've got classes for pot leaks. There's two pot leaks up to six inch blanks and then super pot leak. Because people was getting pot leaks over six inch and they couldn't exhibit them, meaning they'd wasted a year. So we, we bought a class in super pot leak, meaning I can still show them. Ooh. Then we got three large onions. That's always a good class. If I'm a judge, I'm looking for that colour. Nicely dried off. All the same shape, size. He's uh, got a uh, neck on him. He's got shoulders. Plus, they're, they're not dried off properly. At least, I'm at least he's got a one complete skin tied up with raffia. Little rings you can put around the bottoms. Then we got the shallots next to it, and then there's five uh, eight ounce onions. That's always a good class as well. And they got the be um, red onions. Bought that back in a few years ago. Quite a few now do the red set. So you can just put them in. Can you all mute yourselves? I've got a um, crap in the background, but it ain't coming up, so I, I don't know who it is. Ian Curzon. Sorry, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, pickling shallots we got there. As I mentioned before, if I'm all over the place like these are here, you could suck up them straight, unless the, well, the judge wouldn't leave them that way. A judge has got to pick every item up, meaning you pick all these up and then you put them back exactly where they put them. Meaning if they're like that, then whoever's put them there, he's put them like that. You're trying to impress the judge, stand them upright. Because if there's only that one in and them two, for you to get a third, you've still got to impress him. Right, normal toms, uh, peas before that, not many people do the, the peas anymore. But we bought that in. Obviously, we had a bit of spare room. 
if we get overcrowded, then we, we take some it out. But it's, it's all according to how the year goes with different things. Normal Toms, we've got a plate there of six. And then we've got cherry toms. That, that's always a, a good turnout, the cherries. And you see them all clicking on now using vermiculite because that can stand the stuff upright. But if I'm a George, I'm looking for a dark red, firm skin tomato. Cucumbers, put them in a pair as well. And George likes to see the flower on the end. I've only cheated a couple of times uh, exhibiting. One time a flower fell off, so I super glued it back on. It works because I got a first with it. But uh, impress the judge. Runners, always a, a good load of them. That's quite a, a few people grow the runners. That's the class for the longest runner bean. Beetroot, obviously. We used to slice them years ago, the judges don't slice them anymore. One reason. We ain't going to flog them. I ain't going to buy a bid for cut up beetroot on the auction. Celery, don't get much of that in. There ain't many people grow celery on our site now. Cabbage, I used to do the big savoy and the red cabbage. But uh, that was too heavy for people to pick up. So I just do the little chaps now. Spuds, we got a class for the, the white and the coloured. Obviously them and the coloured. Then there's long carrots, stump carrots, and the parsnips. They are nice. Nice and clean, nice and white compared to the yellow here. Don't forget, you got, you're trying to get three the same. To get two the same is pretty hard. To get three, so, so he's done well there. Any other veggies, this one here. That gives the chance of people growing summer. If it's not on the schedule, they can bug it in. We've got them in a few classes. Uh, peppers, that goes down well. There's quite a few to the peppers. Also, the chilies, when we bought them in, that, that, that took over the sweet peppers now. Is that many people do the, the chili peppers? Dwarf beans, that was one bought in as well. And the garlic, another one we bought in, well, it's bought in, say, six years ago. So that's a, that's a newish one. Then we have a salad collection. I eat everything that you go on a salad and, and bung it in a tray. Obviously, them are auctioned off as, as the tray itself. Then we have a, a collection of eggs. This is one league, uh, one, one, well, it's, it's, it's one of about five different, six different things you can pick from. Now we're going to come on to the fruit. Cookers, eaters, pears. Never not really pears in. Grapes, always had a good dollop at them in. And that one is any other fruit not mentioned. Oh, Jared, he's bloody as kip again. He's had a busy day. That's just showing you fruit from the other angle. Oh, Keith, just for you. Nice bit of coleus, and that was, uh, we have a members class, different thing every year. This was for the, I just seed out for the heaviest pepper, and that was for that one. Cakes now, we have to cover them in the, well, with a see-through cover, whatever it's made of. Quiches, they go, these go well, the grub goes well on nights, nice. don't forget, we start the auction at 8, and we, we don't finish them about half 11, quarter 12. So, uh, especially after people that you have a break about nine o'clock, quarter past nine, and then uh, people come back in and they've had a few drinks, and then they start asking for the grub because they get hungry. That's what gets the money in. A lot of flower arranging, always get a few of them in. And we have a section for the cakes as well. There's uh, apple pies. Bread puddings, sausage rolls, chocolate cake. Everybody goes for the chocolate cake. There's about three people bid for them, and that, that goes for the good one. But the uh, cakes always go well. Jams, pickles, uh, always a load of them going, as we can see there. 
And there's a, a, a class any uh, pickle not mentioned, like there's pickle beetroot there, and I've put um, chili peppers in, pickled chilies, a couple of years back. And obviously the wine, that always goes well on the auction as well. Right, pot plants. Then we start on the, the dahlias and the croissants. There are different uh, classes for different dahlias. Obviously, those two are a different lot. Three of whatever them call. We have got a, a, a daily man um, on our committee. He's a national daily of judge. In fact, he didn't give us a talk on here on his daily as taking cuttings and that. But he works in a nursery and he's working six days a week, about ten hours a day. Obviously, because it's the busiest time of the season, so poor job him. Otherwise, it'd go through these and it'd tell you which is which. But obviously, these are not that, that needs a, a lot of room. Well, same as everything else. Pom poms. I know them on the left. Chris I know um, Jeff, uh, one of our top grow, uh, growers, he's lost his missus. A couple of weeks ago, so I, I don't know whether we, we, we got in this year. Gladys, a, a class for a, a three, a two, and a one. It started off with just one and uh, got quite a bit of interest. So that we had the room, so we do, we, we do a three, two, and a one as well. Love me, Gladys, as you know. But there's some Boston flowers in there. That's what they go for on the night as well, the women. Well, everything. It's all good. We've never had anything left over. Now these are started with, um, we've been round, seeing who's got the first prizes. And uh, the size of these, blackberries, that was huge. And it, it does well with them every year. Through the judge's handbook, you're not supposed to put anything under any fruit. But that'll look bare as a badger's. I always put leaves under mine. It, it just makes it stand out even better. Right, two classes that I, I like going in, or collections I should say. Collins Collection, which is two large onions, two onions not exceeding 8.8 .8 ounce, or 250 gram. Three large shallots and three picklers. Uh, there's quite a, about six of us, five or six of us go for that. And then the other one I go for, Colligate Master Gardener. Two types of veg, uh, one vase of three flowers, then one specimen bloom. That, that can be any flower in the dish of fruit. And me and uh, Jason, the dahlia man, we, we go for that. You fight over that. As you can tell, D Jason, his flowers he's going to put in, and it is his best dahlias. He always pips me on the flowers as he's going to. I don't have a, a, a bad um, entry here. We meet me gladys. I think they were of singular beauty. I had three uh, nice white ones. And there's my single gladdy. Uh, veg wise, I'm going to beat him every time, obviously. So it's a cock up with a, with a fruit. And this year I've got a bigger tray and I've got more stuff in. And you can see me flat, uh, leaves around the outside showing off. And I just pipped him, I think, by a point and a half because you get 10 points for each exhibit. But I uh, love that class. Uh, that was another year. As you see, uh, Jason's beat me with uh, three gladdies, one uh, a pom -com, pom -com or a small dahlia. I don't know, I'm not sure. But I'd got, I'd got no gladdies, I'd only got the one. So I had to put, put me three Alstroemeria flowers in. They were quite effective actually, but obviously I'm going to be down pointed for them. But my onions are better and my shallots. But he pit me on that one, so we was quits. That's a close up of mine. That was when uh, I used to have a, a small collection of fruit, now I've got more fruit growing. And uh, it gets bigger every time. That was another year I put in. 
Right, Colin's collection. When I used to go around shows with him, he used to like looking at the onions. He just started growing them for the exhibition before um, he passed away. So when he went, he says, right, we'll have this collection just for him. Two large onions, I mentioned, two eight ounce onions, boy, for that. Three large shallots and three picklers, and you get points obviously for each one. So, what the judge is looking for two nice onions, don't forget it's cut, so it's conditioned. They've all got to be nice and firm, no split skins. Then, uniformity, well, they're both the same. His shoulders got a bit of a dimmer to that. So, they look at everything, lift them up, have a look at the base as well, make sure they're not really right or anything. But uh, nicely dried off, nice colours. But uh, the people are now starting to have a go at it. And that was another year. He got larger onions, but mine were better condition in the sense that where they're going up and down there, we have got a, a bit of a dent in that one, which let him down a bit. Obviously, he put that dent at the back, so he got his best front on. But judge, if I was judging, I always do that as well when I put it back. I show the, the worst part. So then people coming up say, well, them look better than them. I couldn't make one. If you show them what was up with it, then they know straight away. Have got any sense? Uh, we have a best exhibit in all classes. So they picked that one out, obviously, for that one. I've got my best exhibit for the wine there. I forgot which wine that was, probably um, potato gin. But I get quite a few. The wine goes well as well on the auction. We have, we have to uh, auction off a cucumber or something and say you get this free bottle of wine with it. Before auctioning them off. And that's a pot plant in flower. And we have a, a folio one as well. That's any other veg. So that's when all the cards are out, and uh, I've nearly run out of these now. I bought them a lot, uh, probably about six, seven years ago. But we're going to be well down this year on onions. Well, we don't know how we're going to do with everything else either. Still, everybody's in the same boat. So that's just putting the cards out and everything. And the out, we open the doors about half six. Let the punters in. And then once I've had a nose round, they'll be sat down. Luckily, we've got a bar which keeps them in, which is what we want. Right, when I start the auction off, or the introduction, as uh, Paul and Jason do the auction itself, I'm running around like a blue ass. When we start off, I ask uh, helpers. You drag everything, i.e. has got a bit of height in it, all the flowers, to be moved onto the stage. We put them all at the back, meaning everybody then can see the auctioneer. There's nothing blocking their view. So he's holding up whatever he walks in, which works. So this has got to be part two. Usually you start the auction at eight. Finish about quarter past nine, half nine for the break, i.e. for these two and get the breath back. Uh, let people empty the tables, which is the main thing as well. Throw all the stuff that bought into the car so they've got room to buy somewhere else. And after I've had a couple more beers, I start feeding for the stuff. Most of the good stuff we keep for last, especially the chocolate cake, because that'll go anyway. And the runners, these are the kids, because we've got a kids class as well. And we usually them the centred. The kids got the class for the kids is a uh, one veg, one flower, one fruit, if they got it, and a cake. But uh, they all win. We cook the books so they win, but we use them on a night for as runners. Still going again. And that's getting close to finishing now. Presentation night is first Thursday in uh, November. 
This is when we'd finished doing the presentation, that was our singer, we got her to do it. And uh, they presented me with this bloody cucumber straightener. They gave me that for me, Tadger. They were. Oh, look at that. What we got now. Any questions on, on me show stuff before we start off with this? Paul, you got your hand up? No. You haven't got your end up, I can see it. Have I took it off? Sorry, Mick, I took no. it off. Nigel? Sorry, mate. Sorry, mate. Mick, when the, when the judges hand the cards out, is it just first, second and third, or do they add any constructive criticism on now, twice? No, first, second, third. They ain't okay. got time. I mean, we have um, one, of, one of our people going round with the judges, if, like, if the judges got any questions. Yeah. So anything like that, we get the feedback off whoever went round with the judges. Oh, okay. Later on, yeah, yeah. They, they ain't got time, Nigel. Yeah. Do they uh, do they comment on anything that's not as scheduled? Reason I've kicked anything out? Or yes, a anything like that you've got to, yeah. 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 So, like if I'm judging, I've got little cards, like with NAS on, and it, it's got on reason, and then I just fill that in. And leave yeah. that on the exhibit. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think most judges, if they got any bloody sense, they do that. Yeah. Right. I've seen one or two arguments over there. <laughs> yeah. Right. Wheel. First one. I'm feeling lucky tonight. Yeah. You. You've always oh. had your summit. <laughs> Shite. Not spinning. Matthew Smith. Hey. Can you all see that? I hope you can no. all see it. No. You can't see the see will. No. 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 Leslie Stone still won. We couldn't see any of it, Mick, at all. Shit. You can see it will, it's just not spinning. Yes, it's not spinning at all. Wants a bit of toil, on it? <laughs> WD-40 on it. Yeah. Of course, with the wheels spinning. Luckily, our Ben's come back home for the day. He bloody set this up early on. Good day. <coughs> Will we have a ball today, are we, on the night? Hello, Rosie. I've just done the one. They, they can't see it. Hey, Ben. How do? Rosie. Rosie, Rosie. say hello to the troops. Rosie. Rosie. Hello, Rose. Come on, you thought. Wants a hammer. <clears throat> Colleen. Hello. Biggie Tors, eh? Slice of tune. No. <laughs> What's happened to the side of Paul? New no key tonight, eh? New key tonight, have a change. You ran, well, I'm here, actually. Lovely stuff, man. Hey. Lovely stuff. <laughs> Three of them are walking on the ceiling. I've said about six or five. Oh, the wheel back. I'm feeling lucky. 
Rosie. Bloody hell. Sit. Right, you can try again. I'm feeling lucky. Mm. Right, we're spinning. Hey. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh. Come on, keep going. <laughs> oh, is he? Is he? Oh. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Hold on, boys. Go. Right, we'll have one more. There's a cock up. Excuse me. One more. No, no. Oh. Maybe it's not tonight. Kath Holmes. <laughs> oh, look how far is away, man. Two away. Cheers, people. Cheers, Ben. Cheers, Ben. Cheers, Ben. Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Go look after the dog. <laughs> Sit. Right now I've got a new one. I mentioned it last week. Jennifer has sent me a box of uh, remix samples. So if anybody wants one of them, well, you can take your, take your pick, whatever you want. Someone also asked. Bear with me. A couple of people have inquired about the, my method of growing Tom's peppers in the greenhouse, i.e. Do I grow on the ground or grow bags? Right, my greenhouse. This is a staging I've got. This is permanent angle iron, meaning it is nice and solid. So that is in there permanent. That's a weed suppressant, keeping me a uh, growing medium. That's a good brew underneath. It goes down about two and a half feet, meaning I grow in the soil. If I got no soil there, uh, slabs or something, then I got no choice. I've got to use pots or grow bags. Mm -hmm. So I'll be staging, which I've got this in. Obviously, the tops and the bottom staging has gone out, and that's in the the shed. There's also staging at the end, exactly the same again, angle iron. So that's nice and solid. Obviously, there's all gumph on the bottom of them too, the heater. Luckily, I've got power up there. This is the back of the garden. And there's staging on the top of these three as well. So there's a wooden slatted uh, timber for the top. Then it's covered in plastic. Let's go to the next one. So there's my staging back on. Bottom. Uh, staging is just covered wood covered in plastic so it doesn't uh, like if it gets wet it doesn't uh, rot the wood and on the top of that is my plastic and then I've got capillary matting that side and this side uh, capillary matting on both ends or the three ends I should say on that end you know just see there the grow bags which I've got Nigel yes mate Go your hand up, Nigel. What, what size is your green as? What size is your green as, Mick? The eighted and unheated? Uh, this bit here, down here, that was the original greenhouse, and then they had that extension put on. But this this is how I add it when we moved in, the greenhouse come with it. So that's the bit that I heat up. A little door goes on there, and there's a bamboo cane, just holds the door on. It's all and how deep, how deep is that? About three foot, four foot. What's that, mate? How, how deep is it? About three or four foot. What, my soil? Now, now the, the the heated part, how big is it? Deep? Oh, that bit there? Yeah. Uh, is it about eight feet before foot, that? Two panes. That's probably three foot. Yeah. That okay. road on. I mean, uh, it usually gets chocker now in there where I have to take the door off and heat the lot. You know, because this lot is still unheated, that, you know, but it's going to be now. Like, that door is on again tonight, and the canes across it, so I'm still unheating that bit. 
But if it had been a normal growing year, I mean, the whole of this would be a chocker. But I don't know if, if you'd have a show or not. I mean, I got no large onions or anything like that. So I'll grow bags because <coughs> up the end, because I've only got their tops, meaning I can't use the bottoms for growing anything. So I get a good size grow bag. I upend it, break all the lumps up, soften it all up, and then I, as you'll see there, I've took that end up, so this is nice and compact. Obviously, I've got to do it that way as well to get it on the staging. These things I used to use for me. Um, tomatoes in the side of the greenhouse to grow in and then I got rid of them but if you have got them you can bung your hole in with them if you see them they're pretty decent but you don't need them you can just use a, a five litre pot and cut the, cut the middle out put him on the top of there mark it with a, with a pen and then just cut that out and then you put him in about half inch which I have done there this was a couple of years ago, so just in that pot, plus he's got that growing space as well. If you look after him, that's what I'm getting. This is a, a, a good picture in the sense, I haven't had one that good since. I mean, he's smacking into the roof, the bloody windows here. He's even growing out the window. And you can see there, my spray, make believe it, in folio feeding, as you know. But then pots were used for down the side. So this is a good brew underneath. When I first went there, uh, they used to use grow bags right on the top. I thought, why is he using grow bags? And then I looked at the soil and it's crap. Meaning I've took all the rubbish out. In fact, most of the top sink inches I took out. I then fought down as far as I could, could, could. Meaning I was breaking all the rubbish up because you want the drainage and then I then I put a good, good brew in spent mushroom compost, my compost, leaf mold, whatever and I started using these these are good in the sense you can throw your water in there and if you feed, you just feed from the top but as you can see I'm planting out here I've still got my tops on, I'm my benching because I'm still growing stuff on the top of there Obviously, just before they reach the top of that benching, then uh, I've got no choice. I'm going to take that top up as well. And by then, anyway, whatever was growing on here has either gone outside in the tunnel, which I'm using as a coal frame, or been planted out. So then, as soon as they go straight through there, Scott, yes, mate. How often do you change that soil, Mick? I don't. Not at all. No. If, if I get a, something wrong, which I've never had, right. if I get a, anything wrong with any of the plants, then I should think, is that in the soil, is it airborne or whatever. But um, Now, the, the only thing I do, because at the end of the year, I scrub inside and out with Jay's fluid. I empty everything out. Now, there's, there's a bit of Jay's obviously going to go in here, because I'm, I'm scrubbing the glass with it and then swill it down. But I mean, that, that ain't enough to even... Uh, you know, do any any effect to, to that end soil anyway. No, no. But all I do I at the end of the year is top dress with my own compost. Okay. And the feed wise, if if you seaweed meal, then that's the only thing that goes on it. But other than that, no, just, just carry on. Yeah. I just uh, wondered if there was any, if you got any diseases, you know, like because you're growing tomatoes in it every year. No. Yeah, normally you'd rotate when you're on a plot somewhere, but if you, but if, no way. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's quite a few beds. My beds for me gladioli, I've got gladys in every year. Okay. There's a, the raised bed in me tunnel on the plot that's got onions in, large onions in every year, show onions. You know, I mean, Robinson's Mammoth, yeah. they've grown their onions in the same bed, 50 odd here. You know, they, they have yeah. no problem yeah. whatsoever. If they do have a problem, then they do exactly what I do, to sterilise it with Armilitox or J's fluid to get rid of whatever is in okay. there. Okay, thanks mate. Yeah. But uh, as soon as them are planted out, then obviously I've got a cane each one. And there's a rope or string at the top tied up tight, and then keep, keeps the, the canes. 
As you have noticed there, exactly the same as with raised beds. I've strawed it, meaning that's going to stop the, the moisture clearing off. It works. When I used to go on holiday, my neighbour next door, he, he was a gardener, and he looked after me tomatoes. When I come back, that was, that was nearly dead. So I trialled it the year after. Thought, right, I'm going to give him a good watering, and then I'm going to leave it. Obviously, I just strawed it. And I left it and it was 12, 13 days before they started wilting, meaning telling me that they wanted a drink. So I, I knew I could get away with doing away for two weeks without giving them a drink because it's top dressed with straw and had a good watering and a feed before I left it. So it works exactly the same in a greenhouse as it does on your own beds. If you straw it, it keeps the moisture in. And that's when you get a good return because I'm just taking the toms off there for show. So the six there for the normal tomato class, and then my cherries I'll take it off there as well. And you can see this year at the end I've got a cucumber and he's going across the top and straight across the top of here. So if you've got good soil, then uh, grow in there. If you haven't and you've got the choice, uh, replace it if you can replace it. But if you've got no slabs, no soil to it, then just use grow bags. But I know people come down our trading sheds for grow bags and they throw, grow three tomatoes in one grow bag. And they come back and say, them crop, grow bags are aim much crop, no tomatoes are crap. He says, how many you have in bloody bag? He says, three. Good, then it. I'll learn. Right, back of the garden, these are me pot leaks. Uh, as I mentioned before, if you have a frost, because we're still getting them now. If I go down on the morning, about half seven, before the sun gets on them, I'll just go over them with a the watering can. If you can't do that, then uh, on a night, I'll just put paper over. Because usually, if you get a frost, you don't get no wind. You can always uh, weigh the paper down anyway, and that'll keep the frost off. And as Mick mentioned tonight, we got another frost tonight. There's my little chap, I forgot his name again. Well, I've got a photo from un underneath him. Little chap up the back of the garden. Right, once a week, what I'm doing now, that is the only thing, about four drops of maxi crop go into a bucket of water. Rain water, greenhouse temperature. It is an extra feed for them. That's the, the nice mix. It's just like us having a Mars bar. It'll pick me up. Just pick the plants up and all. Right, somebody mentioned last week, I don't know who's on here or whether they, that, that sent me a, an email or something. But they said their uh, onion sets, which I was looking at, exactly the same as these, because I was saving these for my mate Caroline. My spare shallots and my sets, and I went to have a nose at them, and that was all bloody saft, meaning they should have gone out, but it's too late. I've lost them. Right, these are my cormlets, my gladys, top of the garden. OSB of singular beauty. These are what I took uh, last year. I sent some to my mate Keith as well. These are a beautiful gladdy. So I've got four tubs of them cormlets. I've got one of my velvet, what I call my velvet. Sorry, two, two of my velvet. And then my uh, Shalimar, which is the small gladdies, the prims, and Lady Helen. As you can see there, my Shalimar's come through, but there's no sign yet of Lady Helen. So I don't know whether they're late coming through or whether I've lost them or God knows. I'm hoping they'll come through. And these are what I had from uh, Lidl last year, growing up my uh, lion props. Thunbergia or Bergia, however you pronounce it. Or um, Black Eyed Susie, but they're a climber. That was the only one left and he was dead as a ferry. Meaning I'd lost out. I couldn't get none. So I'm, I'm hoping when they're rooted last year, they'll come back again to the cells. But uh, we didn't see how we go anyway. Right, the greenhouse is getting too hot. Meaning I'm, I've got to put a bit of screen up. So uh, two spoons of uh, self-raising flour. Hard water gives a nice mix. Get an old paintbrush, which I've got there and I'm just going to bung it on I have done this end now as well 
because it heats up that much in the greenhouse and uh, this stuff was wilted god knows i used to get them when i was at work right the brews now oh, i'm getting one of these for me mate caroline i'm gonna sort her veg out so I was taking, I wanted to take us some top dressing, so I'm mixing, and this is, oh, really common sense again, so much else I've learned for myself. Instead of just using the rabbit muck, we've now got the goat muck as well, and the spent ops bathers, it just started coming back again. I mean, they've started brewing, so we're going to get that again every weekend. So I'm going to mix the, the three of them together, mix it in the bag, so instead of putting it out, and I've just got rabbit book with a straw. I've now got different bruising, which is even better as a top dressing. Right, Blanche leeks, uh, which are those there, i.e. the long ones, and the intermediate leeks, these are ready to go out. Top of the garden, greenhouse is all the side of this bed. Cover comes off. The pots I put in earlier, if you remember, these are right underneath these uh, slats. Covers taken off, dried, rolled up, and put in the washes. I got there off um, Joe Keeler a couple of years ago. He does this method, and I thought, pretty good idea. Before I plant out, I'm going to fill each pot up with rainwater and let it drain through. I.e., it saves watering too much when you plant it out. So that's what I do. Now everything is going out, I get the mycorrhizal fungi under them. As you can see, the pots are right in the middle of those lots. Water two days before, then you don't collapse when you upend them. Put me blanched leaks at the back because they're going to be the longest. I've just lifted them a bit so you can see the. They've got. Well, I'm near enough all the same width, height, and whatever. I'll put them in. Now, the veil, that's what where the leak joins at the top. When they met, a judge measures a leak, it's from the root plate where the roots start up to the veil, and that veil hasn't got to be split. If that is split, you'd be down pointed. So just take it off until you've got a nice clean veil the next one up. But obviously, that's going to jump the higher it goes. You can lift these, I'll, there's a couple I put in a bit off skew, but you can lift them so all the veils are showing at the front. I, I can keep an eye on them as we are there because the front's over here. Cane alongside it, ready. Now I've gone down to the root plate there just to show you. If I take an old skin off, I'll, I'll take the skin right down to the roots. So when that comes out, it'll be judged from there. Nigel, go on, mate. Sorry, just see your hand. Talking about leaks, Mickey mentioned vial there. I've heard of the word button mentioned on some growers. What does that mean? Same same thing. Is it? Yeah. Right. Button or vial. Different judges got different, uh, but there's only them two. So a judge might say uh, it's 14 inches to the tight button. That's what they mean. Tight button. Right in the middle of there. Okay, thanks. On split. But if you keep a, a nice, um, a good, strong split cane on the side of them with your builder's dam course, they get nice and straight. Just look after them, they'll look after you. So I'll get them a good soaking once it's got in, not too much because it's already had some. And then I earth it up and I also push around the outsides. Yeah, I've got a photo of that. I'm pushing these, all this growing medium, onto those roots that I've just buried. Like I'm not pressing him right down yet. I'm pushing the sides in first before I then do it. But when I do press down, I'm keeping him upright as well. Mixing more of my brew just to top dress. This is my compost mixed with clover and uh, vermiculite. Just to level it off, which I have done there. And that's what I want to see, centipedes or little chops legging it about. Anthropods, whatever you want to call them. Right, collars go on, uh, probably next week, or next week, these will have an higher collar on to make them go longer, looking for, for daylight, get a bit of length on them. And there you can see I'll put the flags or the leaves over the, 
me uh, hanging down at bits of timber. That helps to keep me straight as well. So that's leveled up. The front of my cross of goes in that. Now my intermediate leaks. Because these are smaller leaks, it'll, but these will be thicker and not going long. Exactly the same again. Water two days before and they don't come out. Right, this is that trial I did, if you remember. Uh, clover compost against my compost. So that's the clover one. Nice white roots. And there's mine. So I'm still on par with them. Uh, that one was a spare. Because there, was, there was six of each. And then grew in that row. So I've got five uh, of these intermediates to put out. So I'm split spare one. Which was my compost. Uh, Caroline had that one. So I put them out. Good dollop of water in the in the pot again before they did go out. And then the collars go back on these. Uh, maximum 10 inch collar. That's all they have. So these don't need to go over the top of there. Because I don't want them shooting upwards. I want them growing out as well as going up. But going up on their own device. I'm not going to force them to go up. Right, next thing I'm going to do, they've had a good watering, I've got to straw them. Plus they will have a good watering again, i.e. just to keep this straw down, just to get, get a bit of wind or something. And it's going to take it away. Couple of things in the post. My guard was going through them. Keith sent me a, a blue flowered Salanum. I hope I've said that right, Keith. Yes, yeah, Solanum. Solanum. Good man. So I looked after that chap, put him, bunged him in the greenhouse. Uh, Jenny's rock dust, they come them samples. There's a leaflet with them as well. If anybody uh, has one of them, is looking after us. Uh, Jenny's on Facebook with a reaming volcanic rock dust. If anybody wants to go and have a nose. I did put uh, this on a couple of days ago about how I'm, um, uh, well update basically how I've been using it and the new trials I'm doing with it. I think Nigel Yo started there up, it's up about using it as a dust. Yeah, that's right. As a foliar feed and all this, and it's um, some good reports so far. Plus I forgot to put in, if you've got anything growing you can still use it, sprinkle it around as a top dressing on any of your large plants. Plus, I'm using it, the dust, in my uh, compost medium, growing medium. So I'm mixing in that in, in there as well. That's another one. These two, if you ain't got, well, you ain't got time to read it tonight. But the, the leaflet, I thought, I'll bung them on here. And if you have a look on YouTube tomorrow when it goes on. So if you're going to get more insights into it, I'll put them, them on here. It just gives you more of what, what's in there and what they do. Well, you know, it's good stuff anyway. And this is working, uh, i.e. looking after my plants. They're not drooping so it much now. Right, another lot of gladys going out. This is my me, uh, me second lot. Obviously I've got my tools ready. That's for my eyes to dig them out, my tater peeler. I mean I have to get the skins off first. So this is back of the garden, sat in the sun. Which one am I after? The strongest one nearest the middle, so he's going to win. He's going to come out. All the skins are off. Got to take that chap out. Bottom looks okay. You can see the roots. that are telling me to plant me out. I've already started. So I've took him off there, as we can see with my thumb. I'm now going to get right in with that tater peeler. If you don't get the, the lot out, you, you would throw another shoot. Yeah. Take any out. Right, that's done that lot. Young tell me velvet. Glad is. This is me um every chili pepper plant off a uh, paw. Once again I'm gonna bury that stem. There I've zoomed him on him and you can see the plant, he's even telling you earth me up to the first leaf the roots are coming out on his own he's even hinting to you 
as you know, I, I do it with most things, which we'll, we'll cover here. So there's only a bit of compost gone back on there, meaning I've lowered him a bit. So now I'm going to earth up to those first leaves, which I've done there. Well, I'm not going to look after him too much. Now, if you've got a good eyesight, or oh, can I? This is just to show you two onions. The seed head is still on the onion, meaning that plant is still taking grub out of that seed head. Otherwise, that head would have dropped off. So it won't be long before it does drop out. Right, putting these on. <coughs> that plant is the same as this one. He's that big because he's been potted on. That just shows you what potting on does. As soon as them roots on any plant starts curling round the bottom, that's when I pot on. If I've got time, or I'll do it. Because that's how you get your better plants. You're looking after them better. So next pot size up. Nice roots, as you can see there, good root structure. Bung him out. He's telling it again. That's where that leaf is dying off. That's a bit blurred, but you can just make out the leaf there. And you can see the roots coming out from the last one. And that's where, again, he is telling you, pop me up. Another dollar per straw, because I'm going to do Caroline's very soon. Right, this is on the on the plot, on the tunnel. This is me uh, produce this in now. You can look at me runner bean, which I put in down there. The frost had got to him, meaning we'd had a bloody good frost. Don't forget, this is undercover. So, if, when they did... Uh, mention a minus one this was more than a minus one to job in there is new growth on there that that will come back but he's had a checking growth meaning he's going to come straight out and if i've fed it on there look at the roots coming out of that stem which i've buried so he would have been a nice strong healthier plant if the frost hadn't got him so i've renewed that one inside right Compost. I managed to get a pallet of compost. I had to pay 20 quid delivery. And that, that was still a rip off when I first had, when I had them anyway. Because I was, that was over the price which I usually pay. But I needed the compost. People was asking for it. And they are our members. So we have to look after the chaps. So we stocked up. Jordan Saturday, so half of these are gone already. But uh, we, we got another half in as it is. Right, looking into this. Where's my man? Right, I started looking into this. This is off the farming independent. This is 9th of Feb this year. This is what's happening in Ireland with the peat. Supplies are importing peat and coal brigades from Estonia, Scandinavia, Lithuania and Germany. Supplies drop. Meaning, don't forget the briquettes, the peat. That is why they used peat originally. It ain't for the gardeners, for bloody composting and nothing. This, this is why they do it originally. And they are going haywire. They are throwing a fit eye because of that what's on the top. And it's a disgrace and all this crap. That's the first one. That was 9th of Feb. Another thing is, um, there's that many mushroom growers in Ireland. That's another reason why they want the peat. And they're throwing a fit as well. This is March the 17th this year. A fresh treat, uh, treat to the mushroom industry, they're, they're going to collapse as well because they're stopping all the peat. I'm importing it. Next one, solution to the horticultural peak crisis may be possible before. This is the 16th of February 2021. The boatloads of peat imports now arriving in Ireland. First shipment, get the latest farming news and advice every Tuesday, Thursday. The price of it has shot through the roof. Solution to horticultural peak crisis may be possible before August 2021. In the, always read the small print. Industry stakeholders fear wipeout by September. This is this September due to peat shortage and soaring import costs. 
So I'm keeping my eye out on that because the, that farming institute is updated twice a week. So uh, I'll keep you updated as well. But uh, the, there's meetings going ahead at, uh, at Forest Gardeners as it is about using peat. But if they've crapped on the the briquettes and the mushroom growers, then they're, they're going to get crap on everybody. Any road up. Second lot of gladius going out. This is the end of the raised bed. I've been working this bed for a few years now. And I find a bloody red pebble. How the hell is that getting there? And that one. Gordon. Bennett. Right, three lines out. So my holes are dug with my hand for. A fistful of Vic vermiculite in each hole. And then the gladius are planted out. You might think, well, that, that ain't very deep. But don't forget, I'm going to put a cane up each one once they come through. The, you plant them deeper, and sometimes you can get away without putting a cane in. But I cane each one anyway. Dry the top off, put that away again. Right, then we plant it out. Fish full, fish blood and bone. You just about make that out, that's gone over there. And full of square yard. Covered and watered. So that's one full bed now of gladys. That's two weeks lot. I've got another four weeks to go. Uh, I'm trying to get <coughs> different faulties now of these. So you can see the trees, the to work out that way. It'd be a better photo when you've got more blossom on. You can see that one not too bad. That's the first one I planted out. Because he went... Uh, Haywire, obviously. Then I started looking after my fruit after that one. Right, this is a pear tree. This is his third year. First year I've had blossom on. And he's got, you can't see very well, but he's got two going in that road. And then there's two more up there. And I'll split them again at the top again. But first year we blossom on him. So hopefully there. So the two, uh, two trees this end, or well, three. I've planted these so I can walk up that side of pick. I can walk down the side of these two and pick, and that side of them too. And then the others go north to south. Right, my plants which I bought for the step, uh, these were from Lidl a couple of weeks ago. These are going now on the step outside. And I had to wait to them this morning, put them out for the postman. Uh, went up uh, Brawley Bonk, got a bit of bedding. Got some um, geranium plugs there, embedded for the back end of the garden. Coleus, Keith, look, Coleus. Mm. Right, I'm trawling this. Uh, I use a powder, Seven, Seven Summit is called. It comes from, uh, I think it's Belgium, it might be Holland. But it comes in a powder, like a talcum powder container. And you're supposed to put it on like talcum powder waste that much and now I put that on I put it on my hand and then I blow it on by the dust and I thought that that's for the flea beetle for down the plot and I thought well if that works for that I'm going to try this as a dust so I've got this as a fine a dust as I could but it was hard to take a photo of me because my mouth's got to get right close to that to blow it into a cloud so for, for me to get a photo of a cloud of dust on there you couldn't see me hand so believe me so i'm trawling there at the moment no i didn't you know, put your hand up then sorry mate if it's is it the yellow container the one called seven yeah that's, yeah that's it yeah, that's it all that's it all it's about 15 quid a tub three for 45 quid off amazon yeah it's good stuff though yeah it's the only thing i've found that jobs a flea beetle excellent stuff Plus, I'm using the dust as a, an ingredient for my compost mix. As we mentioned before, top dress, wear to them. Right, my plugs, these are ready to go into my drinking cups, so I'm putting them out as well. These are in the warm end of the greenhouse. Just go back on that one there. So that is the warm end. That's, that's where the door is, where the it was over there right once again this just shows you the the difference it makes with potting something on 
These two are greyhound cabbage, planted exactly the same time. He's bigger because I've potted him on into a bigger pot. Now I've got the room in the greenhouse, I can pot on these lot. Cormets, my own cormets, them are top of the garden. They got a protection from the frost, so I'll put them out. They, these was growing too, that, because I was in the cold greenhouse, they were still growing too much. Even in the cold greenhouse, it was too warm for them. But uh, they, they were putting a bit of meat on now, the velvets. And Miss Shalimar, still no sign of my Lady Helen. Right, this is a van load again, going around to Caroline's, my mate. This is a Sarah, my niece. It says, will you fix my makeup with a bit of veg? It says, yeah, that's good, sort it out. So I'll go back on that one. That is the two bags of that mixed top dressing, which I mentioned before. So this is a back garden. Uh, there's three raised beds, obviously, as we can see here. I'd already put lettuce here, but I'll, I'll put stuff in between them, and I'll put st stuff out here. But I took that spud in a bucket, then uh, a bucket of carrots, spare uh, leek, that's my leek which is in my compost, and then the, it's got the, the large calabrese, purple sprouting sprout, and there's also in there is, um, sweet corn and then spares, runner beans, which I've got a three cane wigwam up there and canes for the sprouts and the sweet corn. So that's what took it down. Nice white roots, put a bit of mic under him. You're not supposed to use it on brassicas, don't supposed to work. But uh, I've tried it about five years ago on sprouts and they went bloody haywire. That was over eight foot high. So unless a sprout is a brassica, so I'll put some in there on your own. Sweet corn going out, nice white thick roots, that's what I want. And I've just buried the first leaf. So the leaks out there on the corner, he's, he's away from me, uh, sweet corn. The runner beans are up this end. Uh, that was me spinach. And that was calabrese. And I've, I've potted stuff around here as well. The spuds and the, the carrots are up here in the pot at the moment. But I'll give that a good covering and a good soaking. So let's get rid of that one. I had another Prezi. This was from Liz. Um, down South Wales. What a bit of paper. We used to be a garden clicker. This is years ago, going back years. It's still good garden clickers. Well, that's good. And we're going to get a talk down Cardiff Spring Show. All the clickers met up there. Good luck that was. That was me, me Mad Pigs. That's where he was my first compare. Great bloke. Right, Liz has sent me a, a yellow colour. Lily and a Crocosia, which I said to do last year. I forgot about it, but I sent him anyway. It's a good egg. Mm. And that's what the, the yellow chap looks like, the yellow Lily and the Crocosia. As you see, they've already started spouting, spurting, so I uh, planted them out. Get them a good waiting, and, and these are through already, the three that you can see. Obviously, warm end of the greenhouse. These are my heavy leaks. These are for Malvern, hopefully. Heavy leaks for Malvern. If that's on. These are doing well in there now. He's picked up a bit. But this is where my heavy veg are going to go. Both sides of them. Getting some more hops. Sweet corn, the last of me sweet corn. That's these lot are going to be potted into there, then them lot are going to be potted on into that lot. Exactly the same again, down to that first leaf. Uh, 
There's me, me tub of me, um, tub within a tub for me spud. That, that would have been too heavy for Caroline. Because there's obviously having treatment and it's, it's going to get weaker and weaker. And uh, that, 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 that spud, I took it down. I told her it has got an upending, whatever. But if, you, if you can't do it, then don't worry about it. But uh, I said they tried. But they're making them. I'm making them too big. If they, if they made them smaller, kids would be able to do it. And um, not so strong women, if that makes sense. Even, it's, it's still going to be heavy for blokes as well, just to lift that up. Don't forget, you're going to keep that water so it's going to have a bit of weight in it. They're too bloody big. I might ring them up and tell them and all. There's somebody else to fall over me. Right, my benching in the greenhouse is a waste height, meaning I'm working, that's, that's a workbench, meaning it's ideal. So an empty uh, compost bag, I could just put the lip under there. And this is just rubbing out the, um, the clover compost, rubbing out the lumps, and I'll put it straight back into that bag before I add my other ingredients. Nice white roots, that's what I'm looking for. If they weren't white roots, then I'd bin it, because there's something wrong with the chap. That one's going to come off anyway, and that one eventually will come off. So I've got him covered anyway. Done. Good watering, nice and uh, dry outside, no wind. So I'm bugged about there. Still trying to get me blue tit, that's the closest. I can't get him yet green in his hole. I'll get him one these days. Right, these lot, where is these lot going? These are brassicas going out on the plot. Uh, so I've got all my sets down this end. This is my wooden structure, which has got scaffolding netting all the way around. The top is still off at the moment. I'm still umming and ahhing. So if you remember, my onion sets have gone out there in two different lots. So that lot there is where these lot are doing. So the cover comes off. Uh, as you can see, most of the stuff I put on there at the end of last year was already rotted down, broken down. I've just leveled that off with a handful, which didn't need much of it. And I've spaced these out. Don't forget these beds are four foot wide. You might think, well, that's giving it a, a bit of distance in it. You'll need it later on. Because they will reach either side of this. Don't forget, I've got a good brew under these. And if they need a cane, like the sprouts at the end, I'll get a cane up later on. Every one again, I've been um, planting them right up to that first leaf, and they're all getting a mycorrhiza from the <sighs> old. This is where I'm looking after them. I'm going to get a feed with a comfrey. You may mix this for me down at uh, Starbridge. Nearly run out, I shall have to give him another kick. So, all this lot gets watered as well. Uh, the straw just to keep that down as well so I've got two sprouts at the end I've already put the canes into them too so that's got to be Calabrese purple sprouting and me greyhound cabbage I'm just going to sow these again now the greyhound ready for when I finish picking him but when he, when he does exactly the same as last year I should just pick the outside leaves off it and use it that road. So that, that's that bed complete. Right, walking past the tunnel. Uh, this bed ain't going to get used this year. This is where I usually grow me show onions. But um, I'm looking at the grapevine. And luckily, close inspection, I've got buds on. So he's just coming into life. So what I'm going to do next week. Obviously, I've got one going up that side, and there's one coming up this side as well. Of course, he is behind the fan. But up next week, I should go down and uh, don't forget the grapevines are planted outside, going underneath up into the tunnel. So I'm going to give them a, a, a week feed next week to give them a pick me up, look after them. This is a uh, Jaron, he sent me this uh, later on tonight. He's got a plot, in fact all, all the family's got a plot. And he's got his green house up, he's good lad, he's learning. Another delivery. 
This is off the back of a lorry. First one I've seen of these, he's got a motor on his pallet mover. Good job because it's all bloody hills around by us. He'd, uh, he'd have had to drop it, well, just lower it from there. But he got a little motor on. And this is a delivery of uh, more my cars off one night. Two for me, one for the trading sheds. Look at that. I've even advertised this on uh, Collegate Garden Club. Would anybody like a handsome, brand new heli uh, pallet? No takers yet. Lost in Nick. Free to a good home. <laughs> uh, Bougavilla telling me he needed a waiter in the kitchen, so I brought him out. Get him a good waitering. An hour later, he was standing up again. And there's me other chap, which I jobbed, was it last week or week before? But he's throwing growth now on the bottom. And the other one, which I thought I'd lost, is just showing signs of growth. That'll be on this week. But uh, <coughs> this morning, I've done that window as well. It was still too hot in there. Now, we ain't had too much sun this morning, but it was still too hot in there. Meaning, if we get a summer like this, that's going to stay on there. If we don't, it'll come off again. As soon as we get a, a cloudy sign, then that lot will come off. It's soapy, warm water. This is me um, uh, bleeding heart outside. He's opening up. If I'd have waited till another uh, two hours, that tulip opened up as well. He's a corker, he is. So I just showed you. Spring is here and things are starting to uh, open up, blossoms coming on, and, uh, things are getting into life. These look I took down to the trading sheds when I went down Saturday uh, for me mate. Jim, he planted them out on his plot. And uh, I've run out of cider for the middle. No! I had to get this chap on top. I stopped up this morning. I'm running out of cider as well. I had, uh, I had four bottles. I only got six left. I used to have them yeah. pallet. Yeah, I've had them all. Them are from Ireland. I don't think I the same stuff as a pink. But this is uh, Boston. Got my own little glass look. Ferried. Right, little this morning shopping. These bags, I'd noticed them, but I never even uh, had a close look at them. So I thought, I know what I'm going to use them for. These are going to be ideal as a tea bag. For when I do me compost teas or my rock dust. Which is very, very fine mesh. So I job them too. And uh, mate sent me this today. This is what's in next week. Or from, is it from Tuesday or summer? These are in little. Loads of veg plants and normal plants as well. My bonsai, my chili bonsai, I've lost it. Last year I looked after him, I've done exactly the same this year. But uh, obviously it went um, haywire. So I've got to start again. So I have done. And I'll try and look after him better this year. And that's it, people. You can all unmute yourselves. <coughs> well, cheers, thank you, Mick. Mick. Yeah, cheers, Mick. Top man. Cheers, Mick. Brilliant. Yeah, thank you. Very good. Hope you've enjoyed it. Yeah. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. <coughs> any, any questions you know, on anything? about sterilising your soil? Yes, Colin. Uh, does anybody else use? I use Domestus. Does anybody else use this? I've used Domestus. I'll use it for cleaning the toilet. <laughs> for my onion bed, etc. I've used it for the last 15 years. Yeah. And there's quite a few leak and onion men use it. Yeah. I still swear by Domestus. Yeah. It's worked brilliant. And if yeah. anybody wants to try it, I use 10 mil, 10 mil to the litre. And put no, no. four litres per square metre trench. Yeah. And I, I do that when I'm when on my onion bed, particularly when I've lifted my onions, 
first thing I do is drench drench the bed with that. Yeah. And uh, I've had no problem with white rot or you know any fungal thing. So mm -hmm. root. Yeah. I know quite a lot of leek and only men do it. I swear, boy. I think that's where I got it from. Yeah. 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 Because uh, I've still got all my lid tops down the shed. I think I've got about um, eight bottles left. But once that's yeah. gone, that's it. Oh, that, that stopped uh, two years ago. Finished. Yeah. As a disinfectant for the greenhouse, I used to use all Militox all day to do it inside and out. Scrubbing. Yeah. But uh, all Militox. Please don't you do it. Go on. Any more questions? Oh, it's a shame. It's good stuff. Happened. Yeah, you bite your sweet corn. Yes, mate. You know, you put it in your little. Is that from seed? Is it that? Yeah. Oh, it is. Yes. Gary Mon. And you put, you put it in your little cup first, don't you? I start everything off in plastic drinking cups. Oh, marks. Oh, yeah. Chip. And that yeah, album, how long before you transfer it into a bigger pot? As soon as your roots start going around the bottom of the pot, pot them on. Pot them on. Okay. Lovely, thank you. I'm going to have three spares. Previously, Mick, uh, when you were talking about... Uh... Oh, lovely, yeah, that'd be great, Mick. Thanks. I'll put your name on them tomorrow. When you were talking about your, your staging you. on your, your angle iron, somebody yeah. put it on. Um, they don't sell angle iron anymore. But that stuff you use, if they look for Dexian, a commercial name it's called dexian slotted angle isn't it oh uh, and then they might be able to look for that rather than just an ordinary angle line if they wanted to build a yeah stage. just a quick one on that one with um it's, someone's just come back to me brain with, with a sweet corn somebody mm. put this on one of the groups last week you, you've got to put them in a block and i says you haven't i trial this a few years back it's, it's exactly the same with my um, tomatoes in the greenhouse. If I'm going past a tomato, I will knock the cane. Then the pollen will drop and it'll pollinate itself. Or I will miss spray with water on an evening. And I do it exactly the I same. With, um, I think I had um, two sweet corn in last year. And I did two to the, um, when the green team was here. <coughs> In fact, they did better with theirs than I did with mine. They had two plants in, two sweet corn, and they lost one, meaning they just had one growing. Meaning that that's that's not in the box formation. And I told them exactly the same. Every time you go past it, knock it, help pollinate it. And they nearly broke the the record for the UK every uh, larger sweet corn. They did better than me. <laughs> So I told them they couldn't have any more. Was, was, that, the one, me. was that the one with the nine what's it's on me? Yeah. There's a video on the YouTube Mick called Spank Your Tomato. <laughs> 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 you leather it with a newspaper. Oh <laughs> it does work though. I mean I had a fruit tree, I forget what the tree was now, and it, it, it gave me nothing one year. So I smacked it with a broom. I says, "Why well, next year? If you don't give me nothing, you're out." And it was beautiful year. So I've since <laughs> I've, found out fruit trees have a rest every year. I've I've put some sweet corn in seeds in about twenty of them. None of them come up yet. Not one. Wow. Now they've got to be uncooked, Paul. No, no, no. Oh. no. <laughs> at the packet from Wilkes. Oh, do you put them in Not... dry or do you soak them? Soak them. Soak them for at least. Uh, seven days. In Spider or Newcastle Brown? Don't wear Newcastle clock, Brown. that's why. <laughs> Newcastle Brown. No, just water. <laughs> in, in a Chinese tub. Not one thing, come up. They're still in there now. I'll just leave them and see if they come up. And say, no, that's it. How long have they been in? Oh, God. About two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks now. Just have a perv of one of them. See if he's throwing a leg out or something. I can't go sweet corn and I can't go peas. Oh, I can, I can grow anything else. Oh, 
try, try putting them in some damn kitchen roll and see if you can cheat them like that. I did that. The one was spouting. I thought, oh, great. So I shoved them all in. Not a thing yeah, since. Just... Not a thing. Not a thing. <sighs> all your cousins did everything. Hey, I'm Mick, gross. you know them peas I put in that um, I, I soaked them for three days? Oh. Yeah. They've all come up. <laughs> what was the most of you wouldn't believe hey. that, would you? Oh, I know. That's where it goes. You'll come up with us for winning the raffle two weeks on the run. <laughs> <laughs> I can't go here. Nigel, Nigel. Yeah. Nigel. Yeah. yeah. I've put some uh, soccer cheese in last uh, cucumbers. Yeah. Last, uh, when was it? Last Sunday. Yeah. I took a Chinese tray today. And Mick, you'll see the pictures next week. I've got one sprouting. And the green bits at the top and the roots go at the bottom. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. And same with me courgettes, they're more sprouting. That's Just right. in a Chinese Chinese stuff. You want to grow beans? Put your out of sight. <laughs> but I call grow peas or sweet Ooh. corn. <laughs> you keep cooking them, Paul? I don't. I don't, I don't, even, I don't even like them. <laughs> You're right, Steve, man. Steve, you got that seaweed yet? What? Hey, you got that seaweed yet? No, I'm winning next week. What were the tides out? <laughs> He's getting with his mask and stuff. Well, it's got to be out, <laughs> hasn't it, mate? It's getting some photos. <laughs> hey, get some photos. What of Umbrestra? The bloody seaweed. So. Yo, we are wellies on in you. Yeah, I'll bring his. Don't we? This is ideal weather for drying out seaweed. It is lighter for them when you come down with Isn't your trailer it? or your roof rack. Lovely and dry. It might already be dried and shredded. Have you ever thought of that? Oh, bloody hey. hell. Hey. Be prepared, making the skates. He's after a free go on the world wheel. <coughs> oh, God. Knob off with your wheel. <laughs> Never bloody works right. Mick, who cut your ear? Nobody has any cut yet. Council. Oh, it looks like you bor- locked, the, locked the Prime Minister Boris. It's all messy. <laughs> Cheeky shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look at mine. Mine's perfect. Who's who, who uh, decorating that track? Oh, we can't see your hair. Yeah, Foy's the best, man. Mine's a. Have you I seen that over there? I love it. Yeah, love it. I love it. It's better mix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mick, can I ask a quick question? You know that flower mixture you put on your uh, your um, greenhouse? Did you put that on the outside or the inside? I know it's a super question. Outside. No, oh, sorry. Outside. outside. Oh, so can, I'm just saying, because I can paint that on my front of my house then. So yep. it doesn't look like it's a cannabis factory. Yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorted. Jacko. So look at we a cannabis factory. <laughs> <laughs> I had some stuff coming in the week. It's called Big and Grow. Fox Farm, it's called. So I'm trying now. I'll hold it up there. Oh, you got it, isn't it? Cheers, Kath. It's in the Cafe one on there. Hang on, I'll go and get it. Cafe one's already on the raffle. Mate, what were them leaks? Them f***ings. Sorry? What's he going to go fix now? You know them last leaks, them that's fat, and then they have like yes. very close leaks. Intermediate. Or the pot leaks. Intermediate. Do what? Was the pot leak? Yeah. Intermediate. Oh. Hey, Nigel, he's one for you. What about him, Steve? <laughs> what? <laughs> What's what? I'm trying What's that one. Not? What about the leaks? What's what? the video on YouTube? Did you just want to know which what there was? Yeah, what variety? Intermediates. The intermediates was a uh, Welsh I'll seedling. Look. Welsh I'll, seedling. I'll, I'll look for it. That's the Blanche leak and the intermediate. What? What was it, Pot Lakes, Mick? Uh, C. 
Essex. I'll have a nose next week. Sammy Cross. That's it. Uh, Cumbrian Sammy Cross. That's it. CSX. They were from your mate. Mick, up, uh, why you do... He's up why by you doing the, uh, on the show? I don't know there's any shows. Who's that too, Colin? Oh. Colin, I've lost him. I've got you oh. back now. More, more I don't than autumn's on for an extra three extra day this year, right? Yeah. More than autumn. Oh. Uh, Suppose you've got your VIP pass. More week in time. <laughs> is anybody, anybody going to Morven? If Westerns is down there, I'll be there. Else yes, I'm there. there every autumn. I'll be there. Isn't I? Yeah. I mean, I can win exactly down there. Yeah, we've got we're on the vintage. <laughs> That's it. We'll catch the train, we'll catch the train down there. Yeah, yeah, I've got a chauffeur. We get Mick to pick us up. Nice, isn't it? We get Mick to pick us up. No, I don't do your exit bit. No, no. No, no. I, I did once, but I got arrested. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. He got caught off. <laughs> Mick, that's quiet. Jeffrey. Keep looking Happy birthday, birthday, Jeffrey. Thank you. Come on, Colin. Give me some. Shall we sing Jeffrey? Happy birthday to Jeffrey. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Happy birthday to Jeffrey. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Jeffrey. Forty someone said. Jeffrey, uh, put any photos on for next week. Give us an update. Photos for next week? Nigel's on next week and all. He's doing yeah, a turn. Sure. Don't forget next week as well. Get your naked photo <laughs> in. <laughs> if you got any guts. <laughs> if you don't want to show yourself up, just put a Swiss packet on your head. Poor Yellow to put a bucket on. Come on, Jack, <laughs> you can do it. Are you a bit it's of a pervert, mate? Yeah. Pervert, eh? I've seen the pictures, week. mate. I've, it's I've nature. I've seen his ass. When he's taking, taking a picture. Me. It ain't nature. Me. Every, every week he ask, asks us for this. <laughs> no one will be going off. They'll still <laughs> find you. Yeah. I'll... Mick. What? I'm going to do it with tu I'll do it with tunnel. Mick, sort the rhubarb one out for next week. <laughs> Sorry? Oh, I forgot about that. What about the past tip? I took that one. He <laughs> <laughs> took it back off with the boy and all. <laughs> I've got a dog. Hey, Mick, you can, you, can, you, can, you can try that. You can grow. <laughs> That's Nigel. I saw a video on, it on YouTube. Yeah. On Facebook. <laughs> and this bloke give it a heavy dose and receive the a normal dose. And you get another seed in the heavy dose, and your difference is like six inches within less than two weeks. <laughs> so I'm, I brought it. I'm, I'm skeptic, but it's good stuff. <laughs> I've read the reviews on it, so we'll wait and see. Let I'll us know next week. <laughs> I'm, I'm, spray, I'm spraying everything with it. Everything, even the garden plants and the palm trees. Or... So are you telling us you've got six inches? I think you have six inches. down his underpants next. Oh, the, oh, <laughs> oh, oh, the wolf fan's off again. Oh, yeah, I did too well, either you blues him. Oh, no, I don't, I don't want to know. You're losing two one. Oh, shut up. Because <laughs> I'm absolutely battering you. Yeah. Uh, spot the noise. Yeah, I'm lucky. Lucky. Oh, God. We'll be sucking on to stock. Can you still in your tunnel? On the allotment. Yeah. Yeah, off lads. I'm going to put the heat on and the, the football on as well. You're hey, going go. <laughs> yeah. I ain't gonna sing the song. In. See you next week. See you I'm gonna the heat on. Colin, has it have <laughs> delivery arrived just as it were? The sausages have come. Have the sausages arrived? No, nothing tonight, Nigel. <laughs> oh. See you next week. Ta-ra. Bye. I'll be in a bit in the
Yeah, right. Let me move on. 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 Yeah. See you soon, boys. Yes, See you, Jeff. Yes, Jeff Ray. Ray. Hey, you're going, Jeff. Yeah, I'm going. Don't get pissed, mate. Uh, I'll have a drink for <laughs> tonight. Why, why not? Because <laughs> it's 5 0 now and you'll be in A and E if you carry on. Speak <laughs> <laughs> for yourself. <laughs> Cheers, Keith. Cheers, mate. Right. Night, all. Night, 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 See you later, cheers. See you, Cheers. Right, troops, I'm going to end it. What's no, that? Line of duty. Again. Right then. Mark, no, suck it. See you, boys. See you, See you, See you next Same week. Time. Same time. Adios. Adios. See you all. See you all.